Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a 2018 Skoda Octavia and she's intermittently overheating. It's not going to be, it's not too mad, too fancy. I have done videos on this before. I'm just doing another little fast one. Just for reference, because it's old, it could be two years ago since I done one of these. Had a 2014 or 15 um, Skoda Octavia. This is superb. I don't know if I said it was a superb or an Octavia. It's a superb. Um, what happens is there's a little shroud sits over the, the water pump in underneath the time belt, and we're going to change that today. Quite simple, quite easy. Um, but just for reference, if anyone is trying to find what happens here, what I'm after doing is I'm lifting the car up, but pulling the wheel off, and pulling off the wing liner in here to gain access in to the timing belt, and that's where we're going to go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pull off a few of these bits and pieces. It's a little bit complex of a little bit complex of a cooling system. If people are kind of thinking about looking at this thing, you don't need to go digging too much here. It is an intermittent issue electronically. It's okay, so you'll have no fault codes other than it getting hot. But out here we have one little electronic pump. That's for the intercooler, I'm going to call it. Charge air cooler, some lads will call it. But that's pumping intermittently water up to the charge air cooler to cool the air going into the engine. Now, back here, then we have another little electronic pump. That pump is running water or driving water up and into your heater matrix. That runs all of the time. So that's going constantly. Even if the ignition is on, that thing is running, driving water up to your heater. When the car starts, what happens is, I'll show you this little thing, the shroud in there is out over the impeller of the water pump to stop it from staying, stop it from circulating water and to stop it from staying cold. It's to make it get hot faster and for driver comfort, I suppose, and emissions to make it this little pump get hot water as fast or as soon as possible, okay? So what we're doing today anyway is pulling off the wing liner, pulling off the time belt, and I'll show you the bits and pieces. I'm not going to give you a tutorial of what happens here. It's only fixing the actual problem and showing you what goes wrong on these things. Okay, guys, I'm at the pulling off my wing liner to get in. I've got a couple of bolts out of my pulley. Up top, I've removed the fuel filter housing out of my way. A couple more little fuel lines I've popped off. Just give myself a bit of room. The expansion tank or jar that sits here, I pulled off one or the top holes off it, left the bottom one on it, and I've just fed it to one side. And now we've a bit, of, a bit of room here. DPF pressure sensor pipes, I've popped them off and left them connected to the pressure sensor and just let them sit up out of the way. At this point in time, we're going to support our engine and get off that engine mountain. And again, not that hard of a job at this point. Okay, we have the engine mountain taken off, I have the crank pulley and the covers taken off. As I said there, I'm not, this is not a tutorial on a time belt change. Anyone that's going in here is going to be able to do it. They're not going to need guidance from me, or at least if you're going to be looking for it, don't tackle it. Get someone with qualifications that can, can do it. So I'm not going to show you the time belt being swapped around. But what I am going to show you is there's a control solenoid. I've just taken a bolt out of it, and that's the water pump. That's the thing that's causing the problem. That's what I'm going to take off. I'm going to stop now. I'm going to throw on the new... Uh, well, no, I'll actually disassemble it, and then I'll give you a cross-comparison between this water pump and what we are actually going to put in to sit you at this point in time, okay? So next thing is going to see the pump and stuff in hand. Okay, guys, here's our pump that is out. And you can actually see that the shroud is stuck out and over the actual impeller, okay? That should be its homer's rest position is back in there with the impeller. I suppose being visible. Being allowed to do a job, working, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so we'll give it a little push. No. Yeah, it just won't. I'm not, I'm trying to push on the edges more so than on top. We'll get a screwdriver. Okay, guys, even with the screwdriver, it's a little, small little one. <laughs> Still won't go back down. You know, on the off chance that we think that I'm doing it unevenly, I'm trying around, but it's stuck. It's stuck. That little seal is snagging somewhere. I'm just stopping it from going back in, okay? What I've been thinking about and looking at, right? My belief, and I could be, I wouldn't say I could be wrong. My belief is that or I had believed that on cold start, this shroud goes out and covers the impeller for a speedier or faster warm-up. Now, 
and looking at this and thinking about it, I don't know if I'm right. What I do see here when I am trying to interrogate, sorry, interrogate and or look at this. If you got a pump and some of the pumps and the kits don't have that shroud on them now, which is not a problem. You don't need to have that on it. You can throw in a pump or a kit. Without that, it doesn't bother the car. It doesn't affect anything. I was going to say that it would be slower to heat up. I don't think that's the, the case. This electronic side of it then bolts into this pump without the shroud on it, and it's a blocked or a dead end hole. At this point in time, we have, we have water that can flow. So there's a little hole at this side, and then there's a hole in the middle, okay? Now, what this little solenoid does it's just a solenoid. It's just an electromagnet on a winding around here. So, in theory, all it does is it opens or moves a little, little ball bearing in there, or plunger. It lifts it, and it allows flow through that little hole here and out here. Okay? It allows flow through and in through bits and pieces inside in the middle of the actual pump. I don't know what's in there. Be worth actually getting an angle runner. A bit of work in it probably. Be worth getting an angle runner, cutting this thing open just to see what's in there. I'm suggesting that when this car is started, that this cannot control that to be pushed out because of the pressure in there. It can't, and the only thing it's controlling is water flow. So if it's controlling water flow, I don't think the water flow is strong enough to push that out against the spring that's in there. So what I think is the the, the makeup or gender of this thing. I think that this thing is controlling it somewhat like a thermostat. That it's actually allowing hot water to flow which will control this, the movement of this sleeve. So I think that, yeah, there's, not that there's a, a wax bag or anything in there, but something similar to a thermostat. Now I know the failing and what causes them to stick open is that little seal in there that does, that does snag. But once that's out, this car in theory can't cool itself. Okay, lads, this is the new water pump then with the control solenoid on it. And this is the sleeve and or the shroud. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. I want to actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do that. I'll sit it down on the box, but you can see that the actual shroud, as I call it, or sleeve, slides down over the impeller nice and freely and pops back in. Nice and freely, and it's, I have, again, I've said this before, I have shown this before, it's that little seal where you have the white part, between the white part and the aluminium, 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 you can see that black little gaskety thing. That actually gets ruptured or marked or pitted or whatever you want to call it, and that snags and that stops that from going back in the way, okay? That's what the cause of our overheating issue, issue is. So there's a new one going in. It's FK, SKF brand. Some people ask me, am I fussy on brands? Once they're big and known, I'm not. If it's a Chinese brand that I don't know of, look, I don't, um, I don't fit. Just won't do it. Okay, there's all our tensioners, guides, timing belts and stuff. Stuck in there to be replaced, bolts, um, stretch bolts to be torqued and stuff. But uh, that's kind of it. This is going to go back into the car. I'd like to see your comments on that, on what you think and how this actually works. I may go along and split that open just for the crack and I'll also probably show you that being powered up just to see it's only a mechanical item, okay? Hi Daniel, get this thing slapped together and drive on. Okay guys, this thing is put back together. I'm a big advocate of marking a timing cover with amount, an amount of miles on it. But engine tray can be lost, header tank can be changed, any of that bit of piece, just timing cover generally stays in there and I like to change them. Um, our overheating issue is gone. I find because of the three separate cooling systems, as I'm going to call them, or three separate compartments to it, I find that a good drive is the best way to get rid of airlock. I have vacuum, um, I don't know, filling devices, which I've shown before, to suck this vacuum into this thing and fill the cooling system, but I don't think it works on them because the pump, I believe, down here for the uh, charge air cooler, I think that's the circuit that gets air locked and no matter what you do, you can't get rid of that air. But, neither here or there, I think a good drive is what fixes this thing. Um, fixes it to get rid of the air lock. So anything you do this kind of a work job on it or work on it, always give it a good drive, 10 minutes, 
or so if you get up to operating temperature you normally see that your coolant level will drop by a slight little bit just dissipating that airlock now i think it's time to go along cut this pump open and try and see what we see okay guys we have our water pump cut open now i purposely went down to one side of the actual impeller shaft itself or the water pump shaft itself now i don't know whether that's good bad or right or wrong what i do know and i can see is that at this point in time i can i spray it in a bit of ease nail and stuff i can move my shroud up and down okay and that's what i wanted now the big spring in here that pushes that shroud back and into the resting position is operated all the time so you get one of these pumps new and in a box that shroud is back with the impeller of the water pump exposed okay what i do see is that i have a seal here all the way around it's just a kind of an o-ring type thing so i'm saying in behind that shroud sleeve here is in theory meant to be dry or as dry as they can get it okay okay guys <clears throat> i have a little breakdown of the layout of the water pump and these things i got it off a technical helpline i have one there to do with that or our actual engine type so i'm reading through it and i have to say that this is like a an awesome point in time the ea288 engine has a switchable cooling pump that works in the end with the n489 cylinder head cooling valve when the engine is cold so i'm wrong n489 pushes a modulated piston in the form of a shroud over the rotating pump impeller preventing the cooling from circulating so that's the shroud that we're um, is getting stuck out on us when it boils over the condition is called static coolant static coolant heats faster and sharpens the warm up phase right so this is really really good information here is the actual picture of the pump very similar or quite similar to what we have sitting here okay where we cut it down i'm going to keep on going axial piston pump is here to generate static coolant the auxiliary sorry axial piston pump is permanently powered by a stroke contour on the back of the impeller the when n489 is actuated by the ecm the pump integrated hydraulic circuit is closed this builds up pressure on the annular piston this pressure counteracts the force of the compressing springs and pushes the modulated piston over the coolant pump impeller this is just that doesn't make a huge amount of sense to us but we're going to get throw that crack over there when we get our pump i'm going to show you if you can see that there's a smaller gap here than there is here and what is it it is let's see can i turn this a little flat surface on the back of the impeller but basically when it's rotating is doing that i like it in out in out in out in out in out now if you look at where our water is because we have two holes in here we have we'd say a feed and a return okay if we can see in there one of water flowing down through here. I'm going to turn this little thing around. I don't want to be careful that this yoke know, doesn't pop out of me. Running on the back of that little thing that's going in and out, we have this. We're going to call it a little piston that's going in and out all the time. And that's going in and out all the time and following the contour of the back of the impeller via that spring. Now, this like a piston in a cylinder is able to build pressure and while this control solenoid is open the pressure that this piston is building is dissipated into the cooling system but when cold and i'm wrong when cold once this control solenoid is closed then this thing builds pressure internally in the pump and that pressure over turns are is greater than the pressure of the spring that is holding that that shroud that we have stuck out it forces against spring basically the pressure that that little piston can can create 
to push out that sleeve. The minute the car, now my thought is wrong, the minute the car gets warm, or starts to warm up, or gets into the normal operating temperature, control ECM will control this solenoid, open the circuit, dissipate the pressure that this little piston is creating, and the spring becomes stronger, pushes the shroud back, and away we go. What's happening in our case is the seal in here gets snagged. And that seal being snagged is greater or stronger than the force the spring can dissipate to push it back. So it stays out, car boils over, and lo and behold. I just think that's awesome. That is awesome. I've never thought about this. It's like one of them light bulb moments, but there's no light bulb here. It's just awesome. I think that's so cool to know in detail how this pump works. It's just awesome. It's just awesome. Anyway, that's kind of it. We don't need to talk about this thing anymore. We're done. This is, I think, for someone going to be an interesting kind of a type video. I definitely have got a lot from this, and I'm hoping that maybe some of you are going to get something from this. But look, fingers crossed you will. Look, please like and subscribe, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next cartoon. Peter Kennedy, signing out.